circumference and area of a circle. We're at 10.2b. So there's five previous videos for this chapter 10 that are in the description if you need them. A locus is a set of points that satisfy a given condition. A circle is the locus of points in a plane that are a fixed distance from a point called the center of the circle. A circle is named by this symbol right here and its center. So this is circle P. The center of the circle is point P, so it's circle P. And it has the radius R is equal to PQ. And the diameter D is ST all the way across. The irrational number pi is defined as the ratio of the circumference C to the diameter D, or pi is equal to the quotient of C and D. Solving for C gives the formula C, circumference, is equal to pi times the diameter. And because the diameter is equal to 2 radii, we can also say C is equal to 2 pi r. doesn't matter what order we multiply in. We could say pi 2r for the 2 radii, but you'll usually see it like this. We can use the circumference of a circle to find its area. We can divide and cut out a circle, then rearrange the wedge-shaped pieces to make a shape that resembles a parallelogram. When we have a rectangle and we want to find the area, we do length times width, right? Well, along the bottom here, this base, that's about half the circumference of the circle. It would be from, like, here to here, right, for the top part, and from this point to this point for this base here. Or we could say it's pi times r, pi times the radius, and the height is close to the radius r. So from this edge to the center of the circle would be the radius. So we can see the area is equal to pi r times r. Or, because we're doing r times r, that would be r squared. And from my center of the circle right here, this point to the edge is 6.5 centimeters. So we can do 3.14 as pi and multiply it by 6.5 squared and that'll give us approximately 132.665. And the more pieces we divide the circle into, the more accurate our estimate will be, because this isn't looking so much like an arc, is it? And the smaller we cut these pieces, the more it looks like a parallelogram, and the more accurate the estimate will be. A circle with a diameter d and a radius r has circumference, circumference equals pi times diameter. So this would be 11 times pi. We can also say the circumference is equal to 2 pi r. Our 11 divided by 2 gives us our radius, and that would be 2 times pi times 5.5, which is also 11 pi. For the area of a circle, a circle with radius r has an area a equals pi times r squared. We have a diameter of 11 centimeters. We can multiply it by half or divide it by 2. We get 5.5 .5 centimeters. And we substitute it into the formula as pi times 5.5 .5 squared, which gives us 30.25 pi centimeters squared. The pi key gives the best possible approximation for pi on our calculators. Just remember to wait until the last step to round off amounts so answers will be more precise. If we round off amounts in the middle of the problem, we could get a different answer. We can find the area of circle P in terms of pi. Here's our formula, area equals pi times the radius squared. We've got a diameter of 16 centimeters, so we divide it by 2 for the radius to get an 8. That's going to be squared. Our area is 64 pi centimeters squared when we simplify it. We can find the radius of circle X in which C is equal to 24 pi inches. Here's our formula for circumference, 2 pi r. We substitute 24 pi for C. So we have 24 pi equals 2 pi r. We divide both sides by 2 pi. 24 divided by 2 is a 12. 
and pi divided by pi is a 1, so we just have 12. Here we just have 2 pi over 2 pi, which is a 1, so we have an r on this side. We can use the symmetric property of equality to rewrite this as r equals 12. Just flip it around. We can find the circumference of circle S in which A, the area, is equal to 9x squared pi centimeters squared. The first thing we do is use the given area to solve for R, the radius. Here's our formula for area. Instead of A, we have 9x squared pi, and then we have equals the pi R squared. We divide both sides by pi and eliminate them as a 1. We get 9x squared equals R squared. We take the square root of both sides, and we get 3x is equal to r. We can rewrite it as r is equal to 3x with the symmetric property of equality, couldn't we? Now that we know that the radius is 3x, we use that value of r as 3x to find the circumference. And our formula for circumference, we substitute in 3x for r, we multiply the 2 times the 3x, and we get the circumference is equal to 6x pi centimeters. And that's not squared because we're doing the circumference, not the area, right? And just as a reminder, because I'm sure most of you know this, we use an equal sign when the pi symbol is in the answer. Because this symbol is representing all the digits of pi, we can say it equals that. We use an approximation symbol when we substitute 3.14 for pi because we're not using all the digits of pi. So instead of 49 pi, we would multiply 49 times 3.14 and get approximately 153.9 inches squared. As of March of 2018, pi has been calculated to over 22.4 trillion digits by physicist Peter Trube. So, this is what 22.4 and more digits of pi, that's how many digits there would be. Imagine writing out just 61 of them. Here we have more than 22.4 trillion digits of pi. So remember to use the approximation symbol when multiplying by 3.14 because that's an approximation of pi. Emma made a trilogy of paintings on three circular canvases, and their diameters were 10 inches, 12 inches, and 14 inches. Find the area of each canvas and round to the nearest tenth of an inch. So our smallest one was 10 inches in diameter. To find its area, we use A equals pi r squared, but it gave us the diameter. So let's split that in half to a 5 and use it in our formula. So our area is equal to 25 pi. We multiply that by 3.14, we get approximately 78.5 inches squared. For the 12 inch diameter canvas, we have 12 inches. We divide that by two and get a six for our radius. So we have 36 pi for our area. We multiply that by 3.14 and get approximately 113.1 inches squared. For our 14 inch diameter, we can split that in half to get the radius 7. We square it and we have 49 pi. When we multiply 49 times 3.14, we get approximately 153.9 inches squared. So remember to use an equal sign when the pi symbol is in the answer and use an approximation symbol when using 3.14 as a substitute for pi. Our next lesson is going to be the last part of 10.2. We're going to talk about the area of a polygon. After that, we're going to move into 10.3 and talk about the area of composite figures and the triangle area formula. So now you should be able to figure out the circumference and area of a circle, and this is the end of part two of this lesson. I hope I'll see you for part three. Have a great day. Bye.